Okay, boys and girls. Um, this is a, I I consider this kind of a I guess a more of a do or die test. This is a this is a test where um, either you know what you're doing or you don't know what you're doing. So um, what tends to happen is that these scores might be more fluctuated. So that 47 would even move higher. So that 90% would move higher, close to like a 92, 95. Uh, but then uh, it falls off dramatically from there. So um, you either know what you're doing or you don't. And uh, so if you keep up with the assignments and ask questions, we'll be good to go. Nice news is that we have a lot of time in this class. Uh, we have enough time where we, we, could, we can kind of take it easy. We don't have to push through and try to cram all the information in. Uh, we've got enough time to make it through the end of the semester. We've only got two units left. And you're done with trigonometry. But, yeah. So, <laughs> yes, this one, one more. So that's all. So, so uh, if you had a good test here, okay, and then you do well on this next test, then you you know you should be in decent position. Uh, we do have a final exam. We do have a third test to do as well. So that's stuff we'll have to get ready for. Okay, but. So let's try to uh, see and understand why this is uh, interesting. And especially, we have uh, three juniors in here, right? Uh, so for those of you who are juniors taking the ACT yet, you guys will uh, kind of finally finish up your trigonometry, and you'll know most of the material that you need to know for the ACT. For those of you who are going to be considering taking the ACT again, possibly for college admission or scholarship, it would be really great for you to take it after we're done with our material in January, that'll be kind of at the height of your mathematical knowledge. Because some of the trig that you're going to see is on the ACT. All right? So let's get back to where we've been, and that is right triangles. Do you remember when we set up right triangles before and we solved for them? And we used something called SOHCAHTOA. We said, well, this is C, and that's A, and that's B. Oh, this is little a, this is little b, and little c. And you said opposite over adjacent, and adjacent over hypotenuse, and opposite over hypotenuse. Remember all those? So that had to do with uh, the fact that had to do with a given piece of having a right triangle. Well, in, in the real world, you often encounter times where there's not right triangles. Okay, quite often, as a matter of fact. But let me give you an example so you can uh, appreciate a little bit. I was a land surveyor for about six summers. Okay, growing up. And a land surveyor actually measures the contour of the land, uh, square footage, all those different pieces. And we would rarely come across a piece of land that was a perfect square or a rectangle. Often it would have a shape, maybe something like that. And so what we would do is we would divide it into two triangles. Are either of those triangles right triangles? No, but yet we would need to be able to find angles distances, areas, all those pieces are very, very important. What was really nice for me, on the fly, uh, you're going to learn it in class, and it is a, it's a good occupation if you want to do something with it, but let's try it out. It says, many triangles are not right triangles, but they're called oblique triangles. Oblique triangles are triangles that don't have a right angle. Let's use what we know about right triangle trigonometry to derive a way to solve oblique triangles. I'm going to call this angle A. I'm going to call this angle B, and I'm call this angle C. What I'm doing for you is I'm going to show you a formula that you don't know yet. And instead of just giving it to you, I'm going to prove it to you. You, you think back to geometry, you're like, oh, I didn't like proofs. I think you'll like this proof just fine. I don't think you'll see it as that big of a deal. What side is this? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a right triangle, seeing how that's, that's all I really know. And we're going to call that H, as in height. And I'm going to set up two ratios. What is sine in terms of opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse? Opposite. What is the opposite side of angle A? 
what is the hypotenuse of angle A? So would you agree that sine of A is H over B? Good. Let's look at B. Sine of B would be opposite over hypotenuse. What is opposite over hypotenuse? H over A. I'm going to get rid of this H so that you can understand what we're doing. In a triangle like this, you might know angle A and angle B. You might know side A or side C, but you probably wouldn't be given that H value, would you? So I want to be able to write an expression that relates those two pieces together that only has A's, B's, and C's in it. You notice that each one of these has H? Yeah. I'm going to pull a little trick here. I'm going to solve for H. To get rid of dividing by B, what should I do to both sides? So I have B times the sine of A is equal to H. I do that same thing over here. How do I get rid of the A in the denominator? Multiply both sides by A. So A times the sine of B is equal to H. Oh, if they're both equal to H, then they are equal to each other, right? I mean, if if I'm five foot eight and Eli is five foot eight, then Eli and I must be the same height. That's the same idea. This is equal to H, and that's equal to H, so they must be equal to each other. Some books actually leave the final uh, final formula like that. We're going to change it just a little bit. I don't like the B next to the sine of A. I want the B over here, so I should divide by. And I don't like the A over here, so I'm going to divide both sides by A. When I divide both sides by AB, what cancels here? And what cancels here? So you're left with this formula, and this is referred to as the law of sines. The sine of angle A divided by side A is equal to the sine of angle B divided by side B, which ends up equal to the sine of angle C divided by side C. Kind of has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? Sine of A over A is sine of B over B is sine of C over C, right? Kind of works out real nice. But yeah, the law of sines is a very important one. Now, I'm going to draw you guys to your very last page in your notes. I'm going to use videos for an example. And do you remember in geometry where you did angle, 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 side, and all that stuff? We're going to get to that, but we're going to lay off of that right now and just focus on the law of sines. But this does come into play because we're dealing with angles and their opposite sides. But if you would look at the bottom, okay, right here in this corner, see how it says sine of A over A is sine of B over B is sine of C over C? I will give to you all the formulas you need for the test. And this very last sheet of paper here, that is your lifeline for your test. So that's what you get to use on the test, okay? And so I'm going to teach you how to use this. It looks complicated. I spent four years trying to make a sheet that people found helpful. And after I would make one, I'd sit down with trigonometry students. I'd say, does this help you? They're like, well, I like that part, but that part confuses me. Over years of work, this is the best piece I could come up with, and students generally find it very helpful. It tells you what to do and when to do it. So let's use our example. What's that? So let's flip the page over, and let's look at a couple examples. It says to solve the following triangles. I'm going to draw a triangle, angle A, angle B, angle C, side A, side B, side C. And when it says to solve the triangles, that means I need to do what we did before which is A equals B equals C equals little a, 
little b, little c. What was nice before about, we always knew angle C was, yeah, we don't know that anymore, folks. Uh, these are oblique triangles, not right triangles. So I'm going to fill in some of the pieces that we know, okay? This is very important that you follow this next step and that you don't just think, oh, I'll figure out this at some point. Angle A is 42 degrees. So I label that 42 degrees. Angle B is 80 degrees. 80 degrees. Can we then find angle C? Why? Because it adds to 180. So I subtract those two from 180, and I get I'm down to 100, and then subtract 42, I'll get 58 degrees. Hey, I've got three of them. But look at the next piece. What other piece of information do I have? I have side A. This is what is crucial. Side A is opposite angle A, correct? In order for the law of sines to work, you have to know an angle and its opposite side. If I didn't know that opposite side, I would be in trouble. And you're like, well, what would that look like? If you had a triangle like this, don't, don't draw this. Well, let's say you had 30 degrees, and that was A, this was B, and this was C. You know, this was 9, and this was 10. You don't have the opposite side, do you? You have an angle, and you have the two other sides, but now it's opposite side. You might say, well, I'm using Pythagorean theorem to find the other side. No, why can't we use a Pythagorean theorem? Because it's not a right triangle. So we'll get to that situation later. That's where we use the law of cosines. So right now we're going to focus on the law of sine. And every day for the rest of the year, you really need a scientific calculator in order to do this type of problem. So I'm going to set it up. I have an angle and its opposite side. So I will, I, I'm going to go into this area. We'll use that. I just, I'm running out of space. Sine of, what is angle A? 42 over its opposite side, 10. Sine of A over A equals, what would you like to do? Would you like to solve for angle B or, or side B or side C? You would like to solve for side B? Good. Let's do that. So then I need the sine of angle B, which is? 80 degrees over side B. How do you think I solved for side B? Cross multiply. B times the sine of 42 equals 10 times the sine of 80. How do I solve for B? Divide by sine of 42. So B is whatever 10 times the sine of 80 divided by the sine of 42 is. Let me show you how, how we pro plug that in our calculator to make sure we did it correctly. First of all, should I be working in radians or degrees? Mode, I'm working in radians right now. I should be over in degrees. And for this entire unit, you will be working in degrees, no radians. So I simply type in 10 times the sine of 80 now I have to close my parentheses divided by sine of 42. I press enter and I get 14 point, we're around near 100, 14.72. Can I use the Pythagorean theorem to find C? No, why? This is not a right triangle. But I'm going to find C. What could I do? Use the law of sines again. Let's set it up. The sine of 42 over 10 is equal to the sine of 58. C is 58. Very good. 
divided by C. How do I solve? Cross multiply. C times the sine of 42 equals 10 times the sine of 58. What do I divide by? Sine of 42. Take out my calculator. Yeah, sure. Oh, you want to see a trick? Um, that's basically what I need to type in, isn't it? Punch this pipe, press second entry. Oh, second entry. There, I got the same thing. What's the only number I need to change in this problem? 80 to what, 58? Oh, done. 12.67. Now, you tell me, what's the biggest angle? Is that the biggest side? Yeah. What's the smallest angle? Is that the smallest side? So you've just checked the reasonableness of your solutions. It would seem that that would work out if we got that. Now, this is so important. If we don't get this first day, you could shoot the rest of the unit. So what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to do letter B together, then we're going to practice one on your own in class, and then you're going to work on your assignment in class. But you, it, you have, what we do tomorrow, you have to get it in class before you go home. You have to demand of yourself, I have to understand this before I leave the room. And if we don't, we're going to be in trouble. Okay? Everybody got it? Yeah? It, it's not that difficult. It's just that it's new. It's entirely new, isn't it? So we got to make sure that we know it and know it well. So we end there, and we'll pick up with an example tomorrow, and we'll move on.